Welcome back to another session of the daily portion of German. And today we have um, Daniela as our guest today. And can you see the markings of the paragraph that we're going to cover? Yes. Great. Okay. So uh, again, as I re uh, read the sentence out loud, uh, Daniela will repeat after me and please read with her. And then I'll ask questions along the way and, and uh, try to think in your mind what the answers would be. And that way you can also take work together with us as we take uh, take uh, take apart the sentence and deconstruct it, and see what grammar uh, grammatical issues are there to be to pay attention to. Um, okay, so here we go. Everybody ready? This is a pretty interesting passage on the pyramids of Egypt. Uh, this is the fourth segment out of five. Den Wissenschaftlern geben die Pyramiden heute kaum noch Rätsel auf. Den Wissenschaftlern geben die Pyramiden heute kaum noch Rätsel auf. Okay, so this is a sort of an interesting sentence. Uh, remember, whenever you come across a dative, to sort of uh, just put it in parentheses or something. Um, I, actually, I, I indicate dative with these carrots, small carrots like this. Some people like carrots. Uh, healthy, good for your health. Um, so, uh, so this is uh, for the scientists, but this is not part of the the core sentence. So we look for the verb. Where's the verb, um, Daniela? Uh, geben auf. Geben auf. So auf is a separal prefix that floats out to the end of the clause or the sentence. Um, and, it, and it's right here. Geben just means by itself uh, to give. And geben auf means to sort of to offer or to provide. So, and what's the subject then? Uh, die Pyramiden. Yeah, and we know that we're looking for a, a plural subject because the verb is plural. Uh, they provide, and then the pyramids provide. Uh, and direct object? Um, Rätsel. Rätsel. And bingo, we have the core sentence. So always do it in this sequence. Verb first, subject second, and direct object if there is one. And so um, geben auf, you would say um, you can do it from here to show that this is uh, a transitive verb transferring its action to the direct object. So the, the core sentence you would read, uh, die Pyramiden geben Rätsel auf. So the pyramids offer uh, puzzles, plural. Okay, now putting this together f uh, for the science for the scientists, how would you put the whole sentence together and translate it? Uh, today, the pyramids offer hardly any more puzzles uh, still for the scientists. Good, good, great. Hardly still. So the pyramids today offer hardly any puzzles still noch. Uh, for the scientists. So for the scientists actually comes in the end of the sentence, although the author wants to emphasize this, that's why he or she has placed the dative in, at the beginning of the sentence. But but don't be fooled with that. This is not the subject. <laughs> okay, next sentence. Diese Bauwerke sind Pharaonengräber, welche die Mumien der verstorbenen Pharaonen in einer Grabkammer im Inneren des Baus aufnehmen sollten. Everybody? Diese Bauwerke sind Pharaonengräber, welche die Mumien der verstorbenen Pharaonen in einer Grabkammer im Inneren des Baus aufnehmen sollten. <laughs> you did a much better job than I did. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, was the verb in the main clause? Um, sind. Sind, yeah. This means they are, simply. And what's the subject? Uh, Bauwerke. <clears throat> yeah, these uh, these constructions. And then this is just a, a predicate nominative. Uh, and sind, just like an equation, there are two nominatives, one, after, one behind the other. So the, these uh, constructions are graves of pharaohs. And remember with these longer compound nouns, it's good to separate them and, and, uh, and then oftentimes to resolve the meaning of the word in English, uh, you might uh, read or translate the second element first and then the first one as, as it works here. Graves of pharaohs, or because uh, this is plural. Okay, Velashi introduces a subordinate clause. Where's the verb in this clause? Um, Alf Naaman Sultan. Yeah, okay. So Alf Naaman Sultan, um, they, so which, so this is the subject, which uh, uh, are supposed to receive. And this is actually the subject, subjective 
um, sense of, of this modal auxiliary. So you could say, literally, it should receive, but um, the subjective, uh, which, which indicates that, that it's not quite 100% sure, uh, is, to, is to express it, is, are said to have received, you could say. Okay, which are said to have received, and then where's the direct object? <clears throat> um, the mummies. Yeah, the the mummies. Okay, so these um, graves of the pharaohs, uh, which are said to receive the mummies, and then and then there you have the core sentence there of this relative clause. So you want to do the whole thing together, starting with sure. <clears throat> um. So. These constructions are graves of pharaohs, mm -hmm. which were supposed to receive the mummies of the deceased pharaohs in a grave chamber in the interior of the construction. Great, well, really well done. Okay, I'm just gonna erase this. Okay, starting from here, uh, reading. Auch die Familienangehörigen, everybody. Auch die Familienangehörigen. Und engsten Vertrauten des Pharaos ließen sich oft in der Nähe der in kleineren Pyramiden bestatten. Und engsten Vertrauten des Pharaos ließen sich oft in der Nähe in kleineren Pyramiden bestatten. Okay, a uh, verb uh, complex is? <coughs> um, ließen sich bestatten. Good. Uh, Daniela correctly included the reflexive pronoun in this, which is part of the verb complex, licensi bestatten. And you could see my markings on the page, can't you? Yes. Great, okay. So this uh, construction with lesen or lassen has a sense of, of having something done or having something done by someone else. So licensi bestatten means they allow themselves to be uh, buried or they had themselves buried would be the, the more idiomatic way of, of expressing that verb. So it's now plural, so you're looking for a plural subject. Where is that? Um, the family and Angehorgen. Yeah, those that belong to the family and and uh instant for Trouton. And and the, the, the closest uh, persons um, trusted persons to, uh, of the Pharaoh. Okay. So uh and let's let see often there. And then this in their near means means in the vicinity of in the, in the vicinity of the smaller. Here's the comparison, comparative uh, value in in the smaller pyramids. Okay, the whole sentence. The family members and closest trusted closest trusted persons of the pharaoh often also had themselves buried nearby in smaller pyramids. Great, fantastic. Okay, and the last uh, couple sentences here. Let me just erase some of this to get it out of the way. Um, okay, starting here, let's read some. Ebenso ist uns die Technik weitgehend bekannt. Everybody? Ebenso ist uns die Technik weitgehend bekannt. Wie die Pyramiden gebaut wurden. Wie die Pyramiden gebaut wurden. A little bit more of a straightforward sentence here. Uh, where's the verb? Um, ist bekannt. Good, ist bekannt. So ist is really the verb, and bekannt is is a predicate adjective. So it is known, uh, but but still part of the verb complex. And and this is the main sentence here, and, and this is the d dependent clause in, introduced by a subordinating conjunction, how the pyramids were built. Um, now uns is what what case, um, Daniela? Uh, dative. Dative, dative case. So we indicate that with uh, delicious carrots, uh, ho hopefully organic carrots. Uh, and so this is uh, to a wide extent weit gehend. Uh Okay, do the sentence. Similarly, the <clears> technique <throat> is largely no is largely known to us how the pyramids were built. Yeah. Okay. Pretty nicely done. I hope you all got that too. Next sentence. Darüber können wir nur staunen und die Bezeichnung Weltwunder besteht zu Recht. Everybody. Darüber können wir nur staunen. Und die Bezeichnung Weltwunder besteht zu Recht. So staunen really means to be amazed. So that's how you would translate that. And darüber is one of those uh, connective uh, words. So regarding that, i.e. what what is uh, sort of has been described above or previously. Uh, regarding that, however, uh, or, or regarding that, we are, we are only uh, amazed 
können wir only we can we can only be amazed and uh, and then the Bezeichnung Weltwunder besteht zu Recht. This is uh, exists or 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 stands correct. So how would you do the whole sentence? Um, concerning that, we can only be amazed, and the term world wonder exists justifiably. Good, right, great. Right. Uh, next sentence, ein Geheimnis aber bleibt. Everybody? Ein Geheimnis aber bleibt. Warum haben die Ägypter für eine Grabstätte die Form einer, einer Pyramide gewählt? Warum haben die Ägypter für eine Grabstätte die Form einer Pyramide gewählt? Great. Uh, and I think you're all reading just in a really great way. You're, you're getting so... Uh, uh, precise and accurate with your pronunciation. I'm, we're really pleased. Okay, so where, where's the verb uh, up to the colon? Uh, bleibt. And that means? Uh, remains. Give us a pronoun. It remains. It remains. You're looking for a singular subject. Obviously, here the uh, uh, a mystery, you could say, mystery. And the next sentence is, um, where's the verb complex? <clears throat> uh, haben gewählt. Good. Perfect tense. They have chosen. Where's the subject? Uh, the Egyptian. Good. And where's the direct object? Um, the form. Uh, that's right. Why have the why have the Egyptians chosen uh, the form? That this is right. This is a direct object. Um, because fear. Uh, um, I was myself looking at Grabstätte first and then, then deform, but this is a part of a prepositional phrase, so that's not the the, the, uh, the core sentence consisting of this, the verb, subject, and direct object cannot be found in a prepositional phrase, so this is the direct object. So the core sentence would be, die Ägypter haben die Form gewählt. So how would you translate the whole thing from Ein Geheimnis? Um, a mystery, however, remains. Why have the Egyptians chosen the form of a pyramid for a gravesite? Great, fantastic. Okay, thanks for joining us and see you next time. Thanks, bye-bye.